For this year's Illinois Bot Brawl, I brought my Antweight Drum Spinner Danger Zone, the Crave Monster, as well as a beetle weight called Rhino that I hastily molded out of shape lock plastic. This year had a number of really hard hitting ant weights, but most impressive was just how powerful the beetle weight class has become. For example, here's Ataxia versus Icky Mouse, and there is Vortex, which is a really good full body spinner, as well as some really powerful verticals like Death Wobble. The most creative bot there is probably not so Free Hugs, which is inspired by Free Hugs, and used a worm drive to control the two arms, each which had a saw attached. My first match of the day was with Danger Zone against this horizontal spinner. I'll let you figure out how to pronounce the name. And I come out quick. Uh, our first contact breaks that horizontal spinner. It just bent the motor shaft and it was a direct drive, so the horizontal spinner is out for the rest of the match. We both had our weapons spinning before 3 was counted for the go, so I was already moving before uh, the countdown was even done. I probably should have been disqualified for that, um, but he had his weapon up too, so we'll leave that be. And that first hit also broke the solder joints to my front left wheel, so driving is a little bit difficult right now. I battled the gyroscopic forces for a little bit, and then finally I'm able to nab one of his wheels. And after that, with only one drive wheel and no weapon, he taps out. So after that, I re-soldered the drive motor, test it out in the test box, and then focus on my next match, which is with Crave versus a bot named Flip. I quickly realized that I should have practiced more with this new 2 degree of freedom mouth because I'm accidentally lifting when I should be chomping, and I missed this first chance. What I also didn't realize till after the match was I had the metal wedge trimmed down just a little bit too low, so I'm not getting good grip from the front wheels, and when I turn the robot, it's pivoting about the rear wheels, uh, which makes it a little bit weird to drive right now. And Flip takes good advantage of that, but the angled sides that I added to Crave for this year worked as intended and it tips back onto its wheels. I get a good pin against the wall, and then uh, Flip returns with some attempted flips. These attempts would have knocked out the past two craves, but the angled sides are again coming in handy, and I get him back in the corner. So right about here in the match is looking pretty even, and then Flip gets several uh, really good Flip attempts in, and this one goes to the judges. They rule it for Flip, so bad start for Crave this year, and the jaw broke a bit as well. Next, Danger Zone is up against a tracked flipper called Taster, and just throttling up that half pound weapon makes Danger Zone do a full front flip. But it lands back on its wheels, ready to deliver this first hit. Unfortunately, Taster is still moving. The gyroscopic forces of the weapon make it really hard to drive, but I inch closer. And all the guts of Danger Zone fall out. That's because they weren't attached in any real way. And, uh,. Yeah, that makes this a pushing match, which uh, Danger Zone is never going to win. And then, as I'm kind of limping along, the speed controller makes contact with the metal weapon and shorts itself out. And that match goes to Taster, even though it had some pretty serious damage to its lifter. Jeffrey from Endgame Robotics is actually there at the competition, so I buy a new speed controller and he was nice enough to wire it up for me. 
Next, Rhino was up with my brother driving against another pushy bot. And no robot is definitively better than the other. It ends up losing this match due to judge's decision. It was somewhat confusing to me, but I mean, you could roll a dice on this one. For those wondering why I didn't rebuild King Googly, that's because it's not actually compliant with the 12 by 12 size requirements when the arms are open. The next one is also with Rhino, also against another pushy bot. And, uh, well, you can see how this one ends. And that's the end of Rhino. And the Crave is up again, this time against an undercutter called Emerald Ash Borer. This is in the loser's bracket now, so I have to win this. And I actually figured out how to control this new jaw, so it's a good start to the match. I hang back for a little bit, just trying to buy my time, limit damage before that trap door opens. I get a good grab in, take him to the pit, but I mistimed it by just a couple seconds, so I have to let him go, and I did lose the right side of the crave mouth doing that. And finally, it all comes together for this new design. Now Danger Zone, also in the loser's bracket, is facing a fairly solid flipper called Dipster. Danger Zone immediately ends up upside down and gyroing all around the arena. Now if I was smart, I would have powered the weapon down a little bit to let the wheels make contact with the ground again to regain control, but I just leave it at full throttle. Oh gosh. And at this point I slam into the wall and the screws holding my brushless motor to my chassis actually strip right out of the motor. And with a broken weapon, this match is pretty much over as I just limp along for a while longer. At the end of this match, both of our weapons are disabled, so it goes down to control, and uh, I had no control during this match. So Danger Zone loses and is out of the tournament. Was that Onyx? That was uh, Alloy 910. Alloy 910, alright. It's not surprising, that stuff's tough. Like I mentioned, the screws have stripped right out of that brushless weapon motor, but other than that, Danger Zone is in good shape and I get it back together for the rumble. Next, the Crave faces Mr. Spencer, which is a very compact drum spinner, and they'd actually planned on facing the Crave, so much that they 3D printed these extrusions that clip onto the sides of their robot to make it a little bit harder to grab. I try the same strategy as the previous match, where I hang back a little bit just to try to buy some time. I don't think they had much weight left for those little side extrusions because they pop right off. I pressure him towards the pit and he drives himself in. Rhino and Danger Zone are out, but the Crave Monster is slowly working its way up the loser's bracket. The next opponent is Stretcher, but they're not able to get their wiring working in time, so they have to forfeit. The next robot for the Crave Monster to face is one that is attended every year, but had a different form every year. It's Bit Error. The 3D printed wheels of Crave are super delicate, so I've really got to keep the front facing him and keep Bit Error away from those sides. All the sanding that I've done to that front wedge in the pits is also paying off because the vertical disc is not able to catch the lip of my dustpan. And here Bitter snaps off one of the bars that allows Crave to stay balanced while lifting. And say what you want about the rubber band wheels I use, but I really need traction, they have more than you'd expect. After that match, the dust pan's a little beaten up, but it's good enough, and I replaced the carbon peg on the right side with the barbecue skewer. One of the advantages of being in the loser's bracket is that sometimes you face opponents that have pretty much been destroyed from their matches in the winner's bracket. 
So the next match was Happy Gnome, which used to be a pretty nice horizontal spinner, but seems to be missing their main weapon at this point in the tournament. And I'd worked my way all the way into the finals of the loser's bracket. My opponent would be a compressed air flipper called the Highlander. And the winner of this match was guaranteed at least third place. The Highlander gets pressurized using an electric bike pump before each round. So finals of the loser's bracket. Here we go. Highlander's going to do his best to get around the side to keep away from that giant ball. Oh, that is the end of the Crave Monster! And that's that. Crave Monster's out, and the Highlander ends up placing second. In a gap between some of the final matches, I do a grudge match with the body beat using Danger Zone, this time with the Crave. And at this point, after all this damage, the lifting mechanism of Crave is pretty much toast. With no functioning lifter, I try to lure him towards the trap door at the end, but it's no use. And with that, the Crave monster is finally dead. Just kidding, it was really easy to fix, and time for an ant weight rumble. And keep your eye on danger zone in the back right here. It's all going so well, but I use duct tape to repair Crave's mouth, and that gets jammed up in bit air. At least Danger Zone's still doing awesome stuff. Oh. Never mind. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,
Here's the aftermath. So yeah, motor's very seized. These two wheels worked and you stayed moving. Yeah. These are destroyed, all the electronics are fine. <laughs> That's a success. And on to the Beatles. Ha, ha, ha. 